I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live edition. It is January 1st, 2014. I'm going to have to get used to saying that and writing that. I know I... uh, Usually for about the first three or four weeks, I end up writing the previous year. So I'm sure I'll write 2013 a few times, and I'm going to have to correct myself. It happens with everyone. Anyway, happy 2014, this first of the year. I'm going to start off 2014 proper, I guess you could say, properly. Before we even get into anything, I just want to say, start it off with some positivity. Okay, and then we can get into all the retardedness, but it's a new year, ladies and gentlemen. You have a chance to fix any mistakes that you've made. You have the opportunity to to right any wrongs that maybe you feel you've done. If you feel your life isn't going the way you want it to go, use this as that that moment in time where you decide to do something different and change things up a little bit for the better. Now, you can do this any day of the year. It's not only on the first, but the first serves as like a physical time marker, if you will, and use it. Use the, the, you know, the first as, as that point in time where you say, you know what, I'm not going to let my life suck anymore. Uh, if there's something about my life I don't like, I'm going to change it. And it's going to be for the positive. That doesn't mean go out and do something that's going to hurt somebody else. Remember, that doesn't make things positive, right, to hurt somebody. Um, it, it, if it's in a situation like that where maybe you're, uh, you're stuck in a situation you don't want to be in anymore, voice your opinion or whatever. But don't do anything that would you know, cause harm to anybody or anything like that. But uh, change your life for the better. Do the right thing. Maybe... Maybe if you're already on that track, maybe use this opportunity to start to change someone else's life for the better. No, I don't mean butt into someone else's personal life and try to give them advice. I mean go out and find someone that's homeless and give them clothes. Maybe if you're smart enough, try to start an organization to get the homeless people off the streets and into a place of their own. Homeless shelters don't work. It's a joke. Okay? The like the the ones down in Miami are a joke. They have rules that are just you know if the if they if the homeless person comes in and they even remotely look drunk, smell like alcohol, or the person thinks that they're high on anything, they're not allowed in the in the shelter. Well, they're going to be out in the street all day. Of course, they're going to be drinking. I'm not condoning it, but you have to have realistic. Uh, you have to look at things 
realistically and figure out solutions to the problems realistically, not just have some stupid rules. That's that's why most of the homeless people and a lot of the homeless people in Miami don't go to the shelters. They end up staying on the streets because the that and other retarded rules and there's other things. Anyway, do the right thing this year. Uh, let's try to you – know, every year everybody always has these – you know, New Year's resolutions they want to start off with, whatever. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to be a better person. Well, if you want to be a better person or you want to quit drinking or you're going to, you want to lose 30 pounds or whatever the case may be, do it. Improve your life whatever way that you think uh, would be good for you, As long, like I said, as long as it doesn't harm others. And then once you improve your life, try to reach out and help somebody else out that in no way, shape, or form benefits you. Like, don't try to f- give something to somebody that could perhaps maybe give you money down the road or something. No, 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 no. Give it to somebody that, you know, maybe, maybe there's a family in your town that's, you know, not well off right now. Maybe the dad lost his job or something. Maybe, you know, maybe you don't have a homeless problem in your town. Maybe there's not a lot of homeless people. Maybe there's a family or two that don't have clothes or are struggling because the father lost his job and maybe the mother lost the job or maybe the mother was a stay-at-home mom or is a stay-at-home mom and the father was working and lost his job and he's having a hard time. Maybe if you've got clothes that your kids outgrew, that would fit their kids. Maybe you start a little drive in your area, a clothing drive, get the clothes together, give it to those people. Maybe make a couple meals for them. Reach out to them. Be human beings to one another. If you want to make a New Year's resolution, a positive one, here's one for you. All right, and don't, don't, don't even make it a resolution. Just do it because people make these resolutions and then they feel that they've made the resolution. They feel good. They pat themselves on the back and they move on. They forget about actually doing the change you know, for the positive that they said they wanted to do. Just go out and do it. Just go out and make the world a better place. Let's start off 2014 on a positive note. Go out there and make the world a better place. However you do it, figure out a way to do it. You know, however you do it. And inspire others to do the same thing. Love your neighbor. And yes, you have to be careful. I know that, you know, there's cases where there's psychopaths living next door and everything. The problem is the media and, all, you know, all these cable TV channels and the powers that shouldn't be would have you believing that everybody is like that. And yes, there are psychos out there. But not everybody is a psycho. Be on your guard. I mean, use your common sense, too. Don't be a complete naive moron about things. But stop being afraid of everybody in your own shadow. That's how they're controlling you. You want to start off 2014 on a positive note. Take personal responsibility for yourselves. You make a mistake, own up to it. No one likes to admit when they're wrong. You think I like to admit when I'm wrong? You don't think I get embarrassed if I make a mistake on air, which I have in the past, and I have to go back and correct myself? You think I'm above that? No. It's embarrassing. If you could see my face on video, I'm sure I'd be blushing at one point or another. It happens. We're human. Just own up to it. The problem is this culture has been programmed to, or our society, I should say, has been programmed uh, to be, a, you know, this just running from any personal responsibility. You see it on TV all the time where the main car- one of the main characters will do something wrong. And I, mean, I get frustrated. I yell at the TV. That's why I could never, I don't watch TV anymore. It's, and I, even if I see a video clip of it, I get frustrated. Even if you watch it on you know, uh, Netflix or whatever, or Hulu, you know, you see these storylines, and I, I get frustrated because the, the storyline, my wife says to me, well, if they solved it your way, there wouldn't be a storyline. The show would end in two and a half minutes. I said, well, that's the point. They, they take a storyline, and they drag it out, and they make you think that there's a moral to it, but what they're really doing is programming you to act the very same way that these characters on TV act. That's why they call it TV programming, manipulation through the media. And all these TV programs, people run from their responsibilities. They do something, the, the whole episode is about them 
you know, one mistake uh, building upon another mistake upon another because they've made a lie and now they got to, you know, they got to remember the lie and they don't want to get caught in the line. And at the end, they end up telling the truth and, oh, look, it wasn't so bad to tell the truth to begin with. And you think that, oh, look, they taught you a moral to the story. Oh, look, they did a good thing. But no, they really didn't because what they did was they programmed the kids, the younger generations, to act just like that main character because they know that that's who these these kids, you know, and a lot of people that watch it, they end up getting programmed subconsciously without even realizing it. And they run from the personal responsibility. And that's a theme that's been going on in the media for a very long time. It's a theme that our politicians embrace. No personal responsibility. It wasn't me. I didn't know about it. Look at the current president. Nothing's his fault. Nothing. Nothing his administration does or anybody in his administration or working for him or even remotely connected to the administration, that anything that they do, nothing is, the, is his fault. Well, I didn't know about that. Well, I didn't know about that. Then he should have been fired as the president. It's his job to know. And if his advisors aren't telling him, then what is there, a coup d'etat going on? I mean, think about the left. You, you, know, you, you say it's amazing when you criticize him, by the way. People will get to the will, – will say, oh, well, you know, his advisors are just hiding things from him. So there's a massive conspiracy to hide things from the president. But you wouldn't accept conspiracy in any other realm except if it's to hide things from Obama because he's really a good guy and he would change things if he could. I'm staring at you with the Spock eyebrow as I say this. Really? Anyway. All this programming to not take personal responsibility is taking its toll. Look at society. Nobody takes personal responsibility more. Everybody runs from it. So you know what? You want to start off 2014 on a positive note. Put out love towards others. Okay? Do random acts of kindness for people that will not benefit you in any way, shape, or form that you can at least physically benefit from. You know, i.e. cash or a pat on the back or something like that. Do it just because it makes you feel good inside to do it. That's the best reward is when you feel all warm and gushy inside because you actually did something good for another human being out of the kindness of your heart. Just do it. There are people that do this kind of stuff every day. This is the kind of attitude that they have, not because they want to be a goody two-shoes, just because that's their personality. And a lot of times they get made fun of. <laughs> Look at this stupid person. <laughs> maybe you should... Maybe you should stop pointing fingers and you should take a note from that person. Do random acts of kindness. Reach out to people. Help people out. Reach out to your neighbor. Stop living in fear. Don't be afraid anymore. Whether it's of terrorists or global warming or aliens or comets or Nibiru or whatever. Even if it's one world government, whatever. Even if you're awake, but you still subscribe to that fear vibe. Stop. Stop. Because you're putting out that energy too. You're emanating it. It's, it's not helping. You want to start off 2014 on a positive note? Let's make a real change. Start from within. It'll emanate without. And other people will pick up on it, and they will change too. Trust me, it works. It's the only positive concrete way to stop this and you know, they say grassroots i like saying screw grassroots because roots can be pulled up you really got to try to pull up six feet of concrete poured concrete slab don't you well we're building like a big poured concrete slab of truth and unity amongst everybody and everybody is welcome Another way you can make 2014 a better place, stop judging people on predetermined prejudices that you've already got programmed into your head, some of which you didn't even form yourself. They were just programmed into you at a young age, maybe because of your parents or because of the surroundings that you were in. Think for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. You want to truly be free if you really, really want to defy the new world order and fight the powers that shouldn't be then think for yourselves. That's the most revolutionary act you could do, to think for yourself. Be truly free. And follow that with your heart. Do good things for other people just because, just because. 
Who cares if your friends point and laugh at you or go, why would you do that? You know what your retort t- should be if someone asks you, why would you do that? Why shouldn't I? Why wouldn't you? Throw it back at them. Make them look at themselves. See, nobody wants to do that. Why do you think they make fun of you? Why do you think people attack you sometimes for doing stuff like this, positive things? Why do you think people are attacked like that or made fun of? The automatic response is to make fun of. Because that's what we're taught as kids. Anything that makes us uncomfortable, you point and laugh fingers at. Well, when you do kind things for strangers out of the kindness of your heart, if somebody makes a joke or points a finger and has to be an idiot or an a-hole about it, well, that's because you made them feel inferior. That's why. Because they didn't do it. And you did. And they can sense and see that you did it really out of the kindness of your heart. And that's what pisses them off. Because now you're getting attention and they're not. And they should have been the one. that they, it, It's very petty. And it's also, it reminds them, because nobody ever likes to look inside themselves, it reminds them about what they lack. It's like when people project things onto you. It's like if you're dating a woman and she's cheating on you, or if you're dating a guy and they're, he's cheating on you. And they accuse you of constantly, oh, you're cheating on me, or I think you're doing this or that. They're projecting their own guilt. While well, someone attacking you for doing good or the right thing is doing the same thing. They're projecting the negativity that they feel about themselves onto you and attacking it. Continue to do the right thing. Ignore that. Have no fear of that. Who cares? Who ca- Really, honestly, who cares what someone says or thinks about you? I go on air. I do this radio show. I don't care what people think about me. I've been called all sorts of names before. I don't care. Growing up, I was called names. I used to get picked on until I started to fight back when I was about... I don't know, 11, 12 years old, somewhere around there. Fought a lot of bullies and jocks. By the time I was a senior, didn't have any problems. Nobody wanted to mess with me. At least I stood up for myself. I didn't sit there and take it. Who cares what someone else thinks about you? You think I care? I don't care. Look, if you don't like, if you're listening to my show now and you don't like me, that's cool. I don't expect you to. I don't come on air to make friends. I come on air to give out information and hopefully inspire sometimes people to do the right thing and just try to educate and do my part in making this world a better place. That's why I come on air. I don't get paid to do this. I don't do this for fame or fortune. And I really don't care if you agree with me 100% of the time or not. In fact, I don't expect you to. That wouldn't make for a healthy discourse anyway. I wouldn't expect everybody to agree 100% with me. That's fine. I don't care. You shouldn't care what other people think about you either. I mean, that's, isn't that how they get you to buy stuff, right? Like the line from uh, uh, Fight Club. Brad Pitt's talking to everybody. He's giving that like, inspirational speech to everybody. He says they, you know, they get us to spend money. We work at jobs. Like, you know, we work like slaves at jobs to get money you know, to buy things that we don't need with money that we don't have, i.e. credit card debt, to impress people that we really don't even like anyway, which is the truth. And how many people run around trying to have the latest car just because they want, you know, they don't, their neighbor has it. Well, I can't look bad in front of my neighbor. Screw your neighbor. Stop trying to be, be at their level. Stop trying to be and meet everybody else's standards and set your own damn standards. Set your own standards. Make everybody else want to look to you and go, wow, what am I not doing that you know, this guy is or this girl is? You set the bar. You know, be the change you want to see in the world. Well, actually do it. Do it. And here's a perfect chance. It's the first of the year, 2014. So step off and start the year right. Do something. I don't care what it is. Just do something different this year and make sure it's positive. And stop telling yourselves, I'm only one person. I can't make a difference. If I hear one more person tell me that, I'm going to scream. Stop it. Well, I'm old. I can't do anything. I've heard that one too. I'm in my 70s. What can I do? You have no idea the difference you could make even if you're in your 60s, your 70s, or your 80s. 
Why are you counting yourself out? Because society says you're a senior citizen? I don't say you're out. Personally, in my eyes, the older generations, and even when I was younger, this is the way I looked at it, the older generations are like fountains of knowledge. You guys, you, the, the, the older crowd, not all of you, but some of you, when I have conversations with a few people that are older, I know, sometimes you guys sound you know, beat down. Oh, we're, oh, I'm old. What can I do? I mean, it's because society has put you in there, and that's how you feel because you're, you know, you're in pain or you're arthritis. Trust me, I know what pain is like. I live with it 24-7, not just from surgery before it, but I digress. I know how you feel. You're not useless. You're some of our fiercest warriors, and we need you to stand up with us. All you old people out there think you're useless, you're not. I want to stop hearing that. Anybody that says, oh, well, I'm only one person, even if you're not old, and you just say, well, I'm just one person, what can I do? One person could make a difference. You never know who the hell you're going to wake up. Everybody makes a difference. The sooner you understand that, the better off we are. So you've been put in that box. You've been put in the corner and been told you stay there. You don't count. Well, you do. Every one of you listening counts and makes a difference every day in this world. And the more good you do and the more good vibes you put out there and the more good energy and love that you put out there, the better the world will be. It'll fight the negative energy that gets released. And believe me, they program us to do things to put out that negative vibe. Besides putting it out themselves. We've all been programmed without even realizing it, to think and act on some of the same thoughts and emotions that these scumbag, evil, Satanist powers that shouldn't be thrive on. And we don't even realize we're doing it a lot of times. If people realized what they were doing and what they were taking part in, they would probably be appalled. In fact, they wouldn't probably be. Most people would be highly appalled. In fact, most of them are when they find out. So you want to make a change in the world? Everybody says, well, what can I do? I can't stop the new world order. They have tanks and bullets and bombs. No, they're so scary. Make a difference by, first of all, drop that attitude. Because that's out of fear. So get rid of that. You can make a difference. Realize that you are special and you can make a difference. And that once you sit back and you calmly and rationally think about the problem and what you could possibly do, at least play your part, You'd be surprised at some of the solutions you'll come up, but you got to get rid of that fear first. And you got to realize that you too are powerful. It does not matter. Every one of you out there that hears this broadcast is just as powerful as these scumbags in power. They want you to think that you're a little tiny ant and they can squash you. And maybe with you know a missile and the press of a button they could, but that's not really them squashing you. That's them using a piece of technology to push you down and kill you because they can't do it themselves. Or they have to have one of their little goons come in and do it for them. Whatever. Because they can't do it themselves. You are all equally as powerful as these people that you you think are superheroes. Be your own superhero. That's what I mean by be your own hero. Stop looking to other people to save you and save the world. And start saving the world yourselves. Everybody says, oh, I need Superman to come save me and the rest of the world. But why don't you put on the goddamn cape and the outfit and go do it yourself? That's the moral of the story. You want to change things, then do it. Stop sitting back there Monday morning quarterbacking. Well, you know, this would be great if... Well, when you're in your living room saying that to your one of your friends or your family and you constantly bitch, but you don't do anything else other than that, you're really not helping. And a lot of it's because you put yourself in those boxes because we've been programmed to. Well, don't. You're all powerful individuals, and every single one of you can make a difference. You'd be amazed at what you could do. Believe in yourselves. Look inside yourselves. You are all so powerful and full of infinite potential. Just because you might have been told when you were younger or throughout your life by whoever... 
whether it be someone in your family, a parent, or the school, or whatever, that you're an idiot, or you're stupid, or you're of no use. Everybody has infinite potential. We just don't realize that we end up getting placed in these, these little boxes and put away on a shelf. We don't even realize it. We end up doing it to ourselves because that's what we've been programmed from childhood to do. Stop it. Step up out of that box. It's like the audio I played a couple of months ago. The inspirational piece I made. It's on YouTube. Think outside the box. You want to start off 2014 right? Start it off by literally going out and just doing random acts of kindness and changing the world up for a better place, looking inside yourself, dealing with your inner demons, tackling them, not being afraid to deal with your own mistakes, accepting them, and moving on. You'd be surprised how much your world, your personal life will change, and once that does, the energy that you emanate will then change the world, the outside world, for a better place. That is how we beat this new world order. And that's how you beat their mind control programming too because you get your personal power back. And you'll realize who you are and how powerful of an individual you really are. And that's extremely important. All right, break coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. When we get back, we're going to get into a litany of topics. Stay tuned. Remember, the solutions to our problems are an inside job. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get into anything else, I have a list of things I want to go over, a bunch of different topics. Probably be be ripping into some of these tomorrow night because I'm not going to have time. Remember, there's two weeks of stuff I want to go off on. But first and foremost, good friend of the broadcast, a good friend of a lot of different alternative media outlets out there, a young man by the name of Brian Hill. He's been on the broadcast in my older episodes. He was arrested December 12th, I believe it was, or the 13th. Um, or maybe well, between the 12th and the 14th, we'll say. Uh, somewhere around there. On a single, I may add, not multiple, single charge of child pornography. Now, someone, some people may go, well, he's a child pornographer, Papa, and you're friends with the guy? No, no, no. Let's get something straight. First of all, he's a, a, a young man. I, Brian is, I think he's 19 or 20, somewhere around there now, around that age. <clears throat> but he runs uh, USWGO. Well, I don't know if the site is still up now, but he was running for years. USWGO was a, an alternative news media website. And about a year ago, Brian, he's been writing for uh, writing uh, for Federal Jack for a while, for years. And Brian's a good kid. I've had him on. He's been on many different uh, alternative media outlet broadcasts. He even uh, was on Infowars or, or Jones's show, whatever the hell it's called. Um, uh, he's you know he's been interviewed by a lot of uh, different, like I said, alternative media outlets other than just. Uh, Jones, uh, he's been on my show before, different networks, Joe, countless, countless shows. Anyway, Brian's work speaks for itself. The kid, anybody that knows him knows that he didn't do this. This is something he's been dealing with for a year. So he started to investigate the NDAA. He went to, I think it was the state senator, Phil Berger, I think his name is, and he got the the guy said to Brian, yeah, 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 I would, I, I'll stand up against it. And then he didn't. He was supposed to give a speech or something where he stood up where he was going to stand up against it, and he didn't. He ended up doing the opposite. And Brian, and I'm kind of paraphrasing a bit here, but he ended up um, lying basically to Brian. And uh, Brian made it his, uh, you know, his mission to oust this guy and find out what kind of political corrupt dealings he had, which he ended up having. And Brian exposed it, and within days. There was a raid on his house, and they said, oh, well, we have reason to believe that you have, you, you have child pornography on your computer and blah, 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 blah. So they took all the computers, the hard drives, I mean, disks, just everything in this kid's house. They took hard drives out of computers, literally just went in. They, they weren't even connected, you know, maybe weren't even in Brian's room, maybe someone else's. doesn't matter. We have to take it. It could have child porn on it. They took all this stuff, went through all of his equipment for a year, ladies and gentlemen, they had his stuff for a year. They couldn't find anything but one picture, they said, of child pornography. 
What does that tell you? What does that tell you? If this kid was a rampant pedophile sex maniac, wouldn't he have multiple pictures like they usually find on people's computers? Yet they're only able to find one picture which they say this kid downloaded. Now, I've talked about this before. Uh, if you go on, in fact, Brian's written a, a bunch of articles about this as well as many other uh, authors for Federal Jack. Go on Federal Jack in the little search bar and type in PornGate, P-O-R-N-G-A-T-E, and you will see that this has been going on. I've reported about like Luke Radowski, uh, Dan Johnson from Panda, uh, Stuart Rhodes, all trying to be set up with child pornography being emailed to them. Okay, so this is a known thing that's been going on. This, this young man, Brian, pissed off a known, you know, once you look into it, a, a politician with some dirty dealings at the very least, and suddenly gets raided, and they, you know, they, now here's the ironic part, if he was a pedophile, and they, they, they really had suspicion that he had child pornography, don't you think they would have arrested him when they raided his house, Right? Don't you think they would have arrested him and said, oh, you know, you're under arrest, you're an evil pedophile, you're, you're a menace to society, we have to get you off the streets? But they didn't. They just seized all of his computers and stuff, and they never arrested the kid. They questioned him, they talked to him, but they didn't arrest him. It took them a year, a year, to get a warrant for his arrest. And only when he started questioning them, because... He started emailing me about the, the second week of December. Uh, well, I mean, I, I always talked to Brian. Like, he would email back and forth. But he started emailing me, telling me, and it was a bunch of other people, too. He had this huge email chain, so he had this, uh, uh, like, a paper trail to back him up that he was going to ask for his stuff back. And as soon as he started asking for his stuff back, and he had a lawyer look, well, he, I, as soon as he had a lawyer look into getting his stuff back is when he found out that, uh, they, all of a sudden the wheels started turning and all of a sudden they wanted to arrest him. But they, I mean, they had his stuff for a year and they never went after him. They never raided his house. If this kid was such a bad, pedophile, evil, you know, monster, why didn't they arrest him a year ago? Why did it take a year to go through his hard drives? I don't want to hear, well, you know, Papa, it takes a while. Horse shit! It takes that long to go through someone's friggin' hard drives. I could do it in two days. Go through and see what's on there. With the right friggin' software, you could buy your own software and, and re recover deleted images or whatever else is on there. Well, we ought to do forensics and... You know what? It sat in the corner for four or five months collecting dust. Why don't you just admit it? Probably done on purpose. And then suddenly there's a, a charge against the kid and they arrest him. And they lured him, because I, I saw the emails, he sent them out to people, they lured him to the police station, because he's, he's got autism, so they think he's stupid. By the way, just because Brian's got autism doesn't mean he's stupid. The kid's highly intelligent, and he's, he's on point. But they lured him to the police station, and he kind of had an inkling that they were going to do this, but he wanted to get his stuff back. They lured him to the police station saying, yeah, you can come get your stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's no, you know, we're not going to arrest you. We're not going to mess with you. And then he, he, was, he didn't go down there. He ended up getting admitted to the hospital because he's also diabetic. You know, Brian's, you know, got some medical problems. And uh, after he was in the hospital for a few days, they came and arrested him and then brought him to the jail. And apparently, according to uh, his family, they haven't been giving him his insulin shots. Uh, they've been, uh, you know, not in the, at least not in the, the time frame that they're supposed to be. Uh, they're denying him shots here and there, uh, or not even here and there, more so than giving them. Um, he's sick. He, you know, his spirits are kind of down. He's obviously, because this is what they do. They separate you from everybody, and then they, you know, they, they browbeat you. Um, not, not physically, obviously, you know, verbally, but he's... You know, he's been arrested since about mid-December. Now, I didn't find out about this until, I think it was Christmas, the day after Christmas, December 26th. And he had already been in jail for, I guess, or, yeah, for, I guess, jail for about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, and I found that I, like, you know, I had surgery. So that week, he had been emailing me, and, you know, oh, I'm going to try to get my stuff back. And then he ended up going in the hospital and getting sick. 
and then I had surgery, so I was disconnected from the the world. And the next thing I know, uh, I think it was his grandmother. She was emailing me uh, or messaging me on Facebook because uh, she, she found me on Facebook. She knows who I am, uh, and she said, uh, "You know, p- please let everybody know Brian's been arrested and blah." And I, I mean, I was completely taken aback. I was actually surprised that they really. I mean, I I I, I kind of had an inkling that they might lure him in, but I was surprised that they went and arrested him. I mean, it was been a whole year. And suddenly they go and arrest this kid. So do I think personally that Brian downloaded any child pornography? No, because if, if he was looking at images of child porn, they would have found more than one image. Duh. Why, why, would, you, why would a quote-unquote pedophile only have one image that they were able to find? And I'm talking like they did forensic recovery and everything. So, and it wouldn't be hard for them to, you know, if he had clicked on an attachment, or something, and I believe he even admitted that he had clicked on an attachment or something that he didn't mean to click on, or something like that, from an email. Uh, and that happens. That's how they do it. That's exactly how they do it. They put a link in. Hey, click here. You know, I got some evidence. You know, on this, and then you you click on it, thinking that's what they did to um, uh, Luke Kardowski. Uh, you know, they. I mean, they went as far with uh, Dan Johnson and Stuart Rhodes as pretending to be one, emailing the other one some information. And if, if Stuart Rhodes had opened up the supposed uh, email from uh, Dan Johnson, it would have, you know, it had child porn images on it. It would have, uh, it, you know, it would have been on his computer and Stuart Rhodes would have been in jail too whenever they felt like arresting him. So do I think Brian did it? No, I do not. I've known that kid for years. He's not a pedophile. He's not a sex pervert. He's none of the above, Okay. And the, this is boss hog justice you see going on over there. Uh, right now, I don't have any emails or anything to give out to anybody. Anybody that has Facebook, there's a Facebook group you can ask to join, but you can also go there and find out the latest updates on Brian. I'm working on getting some uh, some of his family members uh, on the show, either live or talking to them off air, and then I'll, I'll air it later on that night. Um, but just about... You know, give them a half hour, or however long an hour, to discuss everything that's been going on. I mean, pretty much you're going to hear what I've just said in a nutshell, but probably a little bit more uh, in depth. You know, letting them give you details that I, I that, you know, I, I couldn't, uh, because there's a lot of things I'd rather let them tell you. Like, there's things I know, uh, nothing against him or bad, but there's, uh, there's, you know, there's things I know that it would be out of place for me, and it would, it, I, I can't say on air unless they say you know like details but the you get the basic gist anyway um if you have facebook go to support for brian hill that's the name of the facebook page support for brian hill and again look i know this kid and it would even if brian came out and admitted to it later on and said oh yeah i I downloaded that image i wouldn't believe it because at this point, I would believe that they just they you know they browbeat the kid into giving up because that's I mean that's that's what they do. I know him. I know him, and I I mean for over a year his story has never changed. That for over a year that he's been dealing with this, so his story has never ever changed. He's never wavered. Anybody that's ever uh, looked into this or, or knows Brian knows what I'm talking about. This kid was targeted. He pissed off somebody who had some power, and look, the powers that shouldn't be, they have like a, a book that they play from, right? And, you know, when it comes to assassinations, they like to use small plane crashes. Uh, when it comes to character assassination, they like to use the child porn thing. I mean, it, it's not a coincidence that everybody suddenly in the past year, two years, especially, and even before that, but heavily in the past, let's well, say, year and a half, two years, is in the alternative media community is being targeted with porn or child porn. And people could say, well, Brian's a little guy who, you know, the, the New World Order wouldn't want to take him out. No, but, okay, maybe not the head of the, the Illuminati, maybe not them. But what if it was perhaps this evil state senator? And I, I, I say evil in quotes, but this, this state senator, that's a scumbag. What happens if he said, look, we need to make this problem go away? You know, do something or whatever. He says something to his chief of staff. His chief of staff is a real dirty bastard, maybe. Whatever. That's how it works. That's how it really works. I mean, look how Rand Paul, everybody loves Rand Paul, right? Look how he reacted when Abby Martin and Luke Rudowski, 
uh, gotten his grill uh, was about a year ago. And they were, they were calling him out for you know, being somewhat of a war hawk and a warmonger a bit. And, you know, like calling him out saying, you know, you've, you, you, you've talked about these Seeger groups before. What about Bilderberg? What about this? What about that? And he was being very different than he was in years past. And because they put him on the spot and the video went viral, uh, Abby Martin ended up getting harassed at work because she works at RT. She ended up getting harassed and called in. I've played the audio on air. She got called into um, the wherever the hell it was. Uh, I forget the, the, the what building she where she had to go, but she had to go into the building, <clears throat> one of these you know media buildings, whatever. And it had the it was <clears throat> one of the the head of the, the head of MSNBC. Uh, well, not the very high up head, but one of the heads. I forget what his official title was. I think it was news director. But um, MSNBC, Fox, CNN, Al Jazeera, and they were all questioning her as to you know what she was doing, blah, 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 why she was harassing Rand Paul. And she had done this not as an RT journalist, but in her spare time with Luke as a you know, free and private citizen of this country, supposedly, right? And they harassed her and messed with her job. You know, let her know that they rattled the cage a little bit. Let her know that perhaps, uh, you know, you want to be careful, little girl. You want to keep your job. You like making money. You like being able to pay your rent. Yeah, well, then you better better not shake the tree too much. Maybe you need to learn. That's what that was. And all they did was get in his face and video something. So, yeah, these senators, whether they're federal or state senators, they do have connections. A little bit of power, maybe. And the ones that are dirty, they don't like having their tree shaken. They don't like being messed with, right? They feel they're going to teach you a lesson. And that's what's going on in this kid's case. I'm telling you right now, I don't think this kid... I'm telling you, I've known Brian for years. Stories never changed. Ever. 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 And the whole case, the whole way they've been dealing with him is very shady. Even attorneys that have, like, you know, just attorneys looking at it pro bono, just looking at the case from an outsider's perspective, just giving him some advice, have said the same thing. So, obviously, he pissed off somebody, and he's an easy target because he's got autism. He's autistic. So, he's an easy target. Remember, bullies don't pick the guys that can fight back all the time. Sometimes they try to pick on people that they think are weaker. But maybe Brian's not as weak as they think. Maybe if everybody backs him up, he'll be even stronger than these scumbags think. Anyway, if you got Facebook, that'd be the best place to go right now uh, to check it out and help Brian out and any updates, keep in contact with his family, do whatever. It's called Support for Brian Hill. It's on Facebook. Check it out. Again, I don't think the kid uh, did it. I don't think he's evil. And I've, we've seen other people being set up with this. So it would not surprise me if he was set up either. So go check out the Support for Brian Hill Facebook page. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, help out. If you're in the alternative media community, give the story out there. If you need any background on it, go on Federal Jack and type in Brian Hill or USWGO or Porngate. Uh, and the older articles that he's published should be up there. Uh, I've never deleted any of his stuff that he's written. And he's written about a lot of this stuff going on. Uh, and as have... There's other writers. There's a writer I have named Benjamin Franklin. If you look, he, he goes by the, the name Ben Franklin. Look him up. He's on there. He's written about Brian's story and about Porngate as well. There's a bunch of different uh, articles up there over the course of time that have been put up. And you can see, you can follow it, this, this timeline, and you can see. Uh, so, I mean, again, they're, they went after uh, low-hanging fruit because these people are scumbags. That's the way it is. Ah, <sighs> dirtbags. Uh, moving on. Again, su support Brian Hill. Support for Brian Hill is the uh, Facebook group to go check out. So, moving on, I want to get into a few other things before the hour. Uh, second hour, we're going to get into um, a couple different things, but I'm trying to find the article. And, of course, now I can't find the article that I want to find. But uh, I'll have to find it on Federal Jack. It's, it should be on Federal Jack if I remember correctly. I remember posting it. But um, 
in New York State, they're going to be spraying fracking waste onto the roadways. So, this stuff that is poisonous and pollutes groundwater and pollutes you know, the ground if it leaks into the, the soil or anything, pollutes the grass, kills, you know, grass kills a lot of stuff. Um, they're going to spray it on the roadways. And it's funny because I posted this article up on Federal Jack and within a day, uh, this company called Enviro Equipment, which is probably connected to, I, they're connected to fracking from what I could gather, uh, is like, oh, of course, this is this is wrong information. This stuff isn't, you know, the brine liquid that they use isn't horrible at all and blah, 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 blah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a little bit from this <clears throat> this article really quick. Excuse my throat. It's dry tonight. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from this article. I have it up on Federal Jack. It's listed uh, right at the bottom of the featured story section. It's the last one at the bottom there. It says, Environmental Group Warns of Fracking Waste on New York Roads. Despite a moratorium on fracking in New York State, more than a dozen municipalities have received state approval to spread a fracking byproduct on their roads. So, you don't have to worry if if you th- if you think that you or I should say you have to worry if you think that you uh, you you defeated fracking in New York State and ha oh, ha they can't poison our grounds with that horrific crap oh oh, oh. contraire mon frère check this out the fluid called production brine can now be spread on roads in Wyoming Erie Cataragus I'm probably pronouncing that wrong and Seneca counties according to state documents obtained by Riverkeeper, a group that advocates for cleanup of the Hudson River. An additional 10 municipalities in Allegheny and Steuben counties have received state permission to spread waste brine from natural gas storage. Nine counties have banned the use of fracking brine on their roads because it contains pollutants, according to Riverkeeper scientist Bill Wegner. They include five along the Hudson River in the last year, Albany, Orange, Putnam, Westchester, and Rockland. The biggest concern is carcinogens. You don't want to get that into the drinking water supplies, Winger said. Production brine largely comes from some of the 6,000 low-volume gas wells currently allowed in New York, as well as some in Pennsylvania, and is used for de-icing, dust control, and road stabilization. The fluid can pollute rivers, streams, and aquifers if not controlled properly and it contains high levels of chloride, benzene, and toluene, all of which can cause health problems in humans. It can also contain naturally occurring radioactive materials, which is true. And while chlorine, chloride is contained in the road salt commonly used across the country, it is far more concentrated in fracking waste. Some of the brine is a waste product that comes from natural gas storage facilities. Thirteen municipalities receive state permission to use fracking brine, which comes out of the wells, and 10 use brine that is removed from natural gas after it has been stored for a while. Both contain pollutants. So if you live in New York State, and the article continues on, there's more to it. Uh, you can finish reading. It's over at federaljack.com. But if you think that, if you're against fracking and all that, and you think, ha-ha, we, fracking, there's no fracking in, in the state. Ha-ha, we put a moratorium on it. Ha-ha, ha-ha, ha. Eh. They're still spraying that stuff, and I didn't realize that they were using it for de-icing. Even though I posted the article, I hadn't, I, for whatever reason, I had missed that de-icing part. I saw all the rest of it about the, the, you know, keeping the dust down and supposedly keeping the, you know, maintaining the road. Although I don't know how the hell radioactive carcinogenic waste helps maintain the roadway, but they use it to keep dust down on dirt roads, which that's nice because now you're polluting all the dirt. And if you're using it by farms, that's great because now you're polluting all the farm, any of the, any of the food or anything you're growing. They use it as de-icing uh, liquid. Well, what are they de-icing? What, what are they de-icing? Roadways? Are they spraying this on the road to de-ice? Are they using, I hope they're not spraying this on airplanes and stuff, to de-ice the planes. That wouldn't make any sense. And what are they de-icing with this? And where does all that runoff go? This stuff is carcinogenic. This, this amazes me that these people in these counties, these, these politicians... Ah, oh, there's nothing wrong with that stuff. Don't be a wimp. Well, are you stupid? Like, do, do you pay attention? This stuff is not good. You're spraying it on the roadway. This doesn't make any sense. 
I mean, this is completely in, insane. If you live in New York State, you need to, like, really, if you live in one of these counties that does not ban it, you need to get up in your state commissioner's rear end. Maybe start checking their uh, their checking accounts and their, their pocketbooks and see if uh, they're getting any money from the oil industry, the fracking industry. I mean, this is retarded. You realize that the reason why a lot of this happens with the waste, you know they, they take, like, aluminum waste? The, the waste from the aluminum process, that's what the, the fluoride that's sold to municipalities is. Um, we, we take our radioactive waste and make depleted uranium armor-piercing rounds from it. You know why, right? Because it costs so much to actually clean this stuff up properly and dispose of it properly so it doesn't contaminate the environment and or kill human beings. These scumbags that run these companies realize that it's more cost effective for them to take this stuff and sell it as some other product for some other you know reason. Oh, you can use it for this. They'll go out and they'll hire some a-hole scientist to back them up because they give him money or grants or whatever and he backs up their findings. That's where fossil fuels came from. Go look at that one. Rockefeller, late 1800s. So they get people to just Come up with these studies and, hey, you can spray this brine on the roadway. It'll strengthen the road. It's naturally radioactive. Just because it's naturally radioactive, that you know, organic radioactivity. It's still radioactive. Duh. Organic or man-made. It don't matter. It's bad. Don't believe they're... Their hype, oh, a little bit of radiation doesn't hurt you. Yes, it does. It's cumulative. They're lying to you. Of course, they really don't care about radiation hitting you, right? I mean, they're not telling you about Fukushima. Steam venting, radioactive steam coming over the West Coast. I wanted to move to Washington State. Ain't never gonna do it, because that place now glows in the dark. I have friends on the West Coast. I've told them, you need to get out. There's a reason all the Hollywood stars are packing up and selling all their crap, but I digress. We'll have to get into that in an hour or two. This is Sparta! Hour one flew right by. Stay tuned. Hour two coming right up. We get back in Arkansas. Mother destroys Common Core. Arctic ice proves global warming wrong and more. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye from federaljack.com. It is January 1st, 2014. First day of the new year. Hour number two. I want to get into a slew of other topics. I focused on a few things. First half hour, I focused on some positivity, starting off 2014, right? I got into a few other things, second half of the first hour. Now I want to get on to a few things I mentioned going out to the break. First and foremost, let's listen to an Arkansas mother, and I'm sure some of you might have heard this on other radio shows, but as you know, I have talked to Charlotte as a re many times about this, and I have an interview with her coming up. I'm going to air in the next uh, few days or by by the end of next week, it'll be on. I have to figure out a day. I have to finish editing and stuff. I have not touched my editing software in about two and a half weeks. I have to knock the dust off of that. But I will be getting the interview finished and aired for you all. It's about Common Core and her new DVD box set called uh, The Global Road to Ruin Through Education. It's If I remember correctly, it's seven... DVDs and a CD, all, all these different interviews, and then the CDs filled with uh, PDFs and a bunch of other stuff. But just, it's amazing, and it's only I think fifty bucks, you know, for you know, uh, basically an eight disc set. You, you can't beat that. Anyway, um, I talked to her about that in Common Core many a times. Uh, I've talked about the deliberate dumbing down with Charlotte. If you go on Federal Jack. In the search bar, you can type Charlotte Iserby and it'll come up that way, or you can just click on the DTRH uh, with Popeye 
in the second header line there. Uh, and uh, you can, because there's two, there's two headers. You know, one has a bunch of uh, tabs, and then there's another one below it with the sub, some of the uh, categories. Well, in the categories header, you'll see DTRH uh, with Popeye. If you click on that, that brings you to all of the archives that are posted, uh, you know, with the player and stuff as an uh, as a post itself on the site. And in there, all of the interviews I've done with Charlotte are there. Easier probably just to go to the search bar and type in Charlotte Iserby, uh, and they'll come up. And you can I would suggest listening to them. And I'll let you know, uh, you know, over the next day or so when I'm going to air the other one, so you guys can hear that too. But it's also always available in my archives. You know, at True Frequency, available in the archives on YouTube, available in the archives on federaljack.com to download, uh, which if you're not sure, if you're new to the broadcast, you can go over to the right side of the website, right at the very top there, where it says Down the Rabbit Hole with Popeye. There's a red and a green tab underneath it. The red one brings up the Listen Live page. The green one brings up the archive page. And then you can select what year. 2011, 2012, 2013, now I'm going to have to do 2014. And whatever year you want to listen to a show from, you click on that and then it'll bring up the different, uh, you know, it'll bring up that year and all the shows from that year and you can listen to them. There's also an, on that page where you would select the year you want to, you know, whatever year of archive you want to go into, uh, there's a link above that to the download section on Federal Jack, the downloadable archive section for my radio show. And you can download all of my shows, high quality MP3 there. Um, uh, some of them are 128K, the other ones are 64K, but either way, it's all stereo quality, CD quality sound. And you can, I encourage you to download them, put them on your MP3 device, burn them to CDs, put them on your computer, listen to them. And then while you're listening, take notes. Take notes about things I'm talking about and go investigate it for yourselves. Don't just believe what I tell you because I say it and, you know, you like the sound of my voice or you appreciate my intellect or you think I'm a nice person or you just all around like the show, whatever. Don't believe me because I say it. Don't. You're not going to learn that way. And I'm, that defeats the purpose of me doing this show because I'm not trying to do this show for, to be your superhero. I'm just trying to be like the teacher teaching you how to do the same things I'm doing and how, you know, just trying to show you that we're all on the same level. I'm not above any of you all. I don't want you guys thinking of me like that. You know, again, that defeats the whole, the whole phrase, the solutions to our problems are an inside job. If I tell you to look to me like your superhero, just believe me because I said it, then that kind of defeats exactly what I'm trying to tell you to do, right? I'd be speaking out of both sides of my mouth. So I don't expect you to believe anything I say just because I say it. Take notes and go research this stuff for yourself. And then that'll help you grow. And that'll help you along your own path. And then along your own path, you'll, you'll, come, you'll come across things and experience things you know, that, for, you know, that you're meant to experience or whatever. And it's all part of growing is you have to do your own investigative stuff. Don't be lazy and expect people to do it for you. Anyway, I want to get into the, um, the Arkansas mom destroying Common Core. If you haven't heard this, this is just awesome. And she decimates Common Core, by the way, by showing com, you know, by showing the parents and the the uh, the school administrators exactly why Common Core is bad. She, how does she do this? How does she demonstrate this? She does it in the best way. She demonstrates it using Common Core. She shows she she uses common sense versus Common Core. Common sense is what you should be taught. And what you should have in Common Core is the garbage, the communist core crap that they're trying to teach. Remember, this is all part of the deliberate dumbing down agenda. Charlotte Isby has talked about this. Go get her book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. It's deliberatedumbingdown.com, and you can get the free PDF version. Buy the book, because the, the book, the, she's got a... Oh, the, the, there's a huge telephone book version of it, and then there's a smaller version of it. If you buy the telephone book size one, she's only got a few left, the original print one that's out of print now. Uh, I have a copy of it, but she autographs them for you, and she throws in a copy of the abridged version. And it, it, the abridged version has a few updates. Get it. It's worth it. I promise you. 
Uh, and John Taylor Gatto has a book out too. I can't remember the name of his book. Just look him up on YouTube. In fact, I'm working on getting him on. He's another uh, you know, great individual for blowing the whistle on this stuff. Anyway, so this mother totally decimates at this hearing. I, I guess it's like a, a, a school board meeting or whatever. And she totally destroys Common Core. It only takes her about four minutes to do it. But it's just, it's funny because it just goes to show you that common sense versus Common Core, common sense wins. Listen to this. Uh, any, so all that's, all that's done. Now, um, we, have, we are down to our public comment time. I would like to uh, recognize Mrs. Karen Lamoureux, who is, uh, has three minutes to speak. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Chairman and the Board. Uh, my name is Karen. I'm a mother of three in the Pulaski County Special School District. Uh, I am here today not speaking just uh, on behalf of myself. Uh, I'm here representing 1,110 other parents, educators, and taxpayers in our state who have some very serious reservations about the Common Core Initiative. We are not alone in this regard. Six other states have pulled out of their park agreement. 22 other states currently have legislation pending to either get out of Common Core or to make significant changes to it. After listening to what was said this morning, I have come to the conclusion that this board is clearly as uninformed as the parents are or were when these standards were adopted we were told the same thing that you were told, and that Common Core is a set of rigorous, college-ready, internationally benchmark standards that prepare our kids to compete in a global economy. This is nothing more than an empty sales pitch for corporations and government agencies to profit from our kids and sell them downriver in the name of saving education. I have a math question for you, board members. Are you ready? Get your pencils out. I'm not kidding. Are you smarter than a common core fourth grader? Let's find out. The problem is, Mr. Yamada's class has 18 students. If the class counts around by a number and ends with 90, what number did they count by? I'll restate the problem. Mr. Yamada's class has 18 students. If the class counts around by a number and ends with, num with 90, what number did they count by? Does anyone on the board have an answer? Five. And may I ask, madam, uh, how did you come up with that answer? You know why? Because that's what makes sense, right? That's the way we were taught to do it in the fourth grade level. This, however, is what the Common Core Standards expect our fourth graders to do. If they solve it in those two steps, they get it marked wrong. They are expected to draw 18 circles with 90 hash marks solving this problem in exactly 108 steps. Board members, this is not rigorous. This is not college ready. This is not preparing our children to compete in a global economy. Skipping rote memorization of multiplication tables is hindering their ability to master long division and fractions later on in the semester. And now our children who were testing in the 80th or higher percentile in math last year are now coming home with C's, D's, and F's on their report cards. Not because, as Arnie Duncan would put it, that white suburban mothers think their children aren't as brilliant as they thought they were, but because, thank you. I encourage you to listen to us when we send you our emails, despite the comments that were made by our chairperson here today. Our concerns are not based on hysteria or propaganda. They are based on fact, and we are prepared to present those facts. Can you see the trembling in my voice? Parents have not had a voice here, and you need to listen to our concerns. We are moving forward with our legislature to make some very serious changes to this, and all I ask is that you bend your ear and take us seriously. We are college-educated parents. I come to you with 12 years of college education and a former member of the National Honor Society when I tell you this is not working, and it's not what they told you it would be. We will save the privacy concerns and the testing concerns for our legislature. But when it comes to standards, that's your ball court, and we need you to help us with this because this program is dumbing our children down. Thank you. She's 110% correct. And she's right. There are privacy concerns and other concerns. Uh, 
with it, which they're going to go after with the legislature. But she's talking to them, which I think is the uh, the school administration, the, the uh, whatever the hell they call it now. What they call it like the PTA, Parent Teacher Association. I think this was the school board that she was uh, she was talking with, but um, they are Common Core is, this, is literally dumbing kids down. I mean, that you, you saw the problem right there. Very simple math problem, which you could solve in one or two steps, right? Maybe th- maybe, maybe three steps at the most. Hundred and eight steps. They want you to draw circles with lines and all this other crap in it. Well, what? What is that? You know what that is? Is that's teaching a certain way to think, and only a certain way to think. And if your kid solves the problem in two steps or three steps, they're labeled a problem child. How do I know this? Because the predecessor to this stuff, and Charlotte has talked about this and agreed with me, the predecessor to this stuff was the crap that they tested us with when I was a kid. And it was the same way. You know, I failed algebra class and had to go to summer school two years in a row for math. I was made to feel like I was stupid and I couldn't, I wasn't smart enough. And for a few years, I actually bought that when it came to math. Actually, for a very long time, I I, I thought about that when it came to math. And I would limit myself and say, well, you can't do this because you're going to need math or whatever. For, For a brief period of time, I did believe that. I was dumb. When it came to math, I was smart with other things, but math, I was, I was dumb. And I realized that I wasn't stupid because, see, I could get the same answer the teacher could. I just wouldn't get it in the exact same way the teacher wanted me to get it. And I failed two years in a row and had to go to summer school because of it. Now, when I look back and I see if my mother were still alive, I'd be able to show her this. And I'd be able to point this out to her, and she would be like, wow, you know, you're right. Because uh, she remembers going through all this with me. I didn't realize what was going on back then. I thought maybe there was partially something wrong with me. I thought maybe I was just playing the system. To a certain degree, I did. But I also thought I was being singled out. What I didn't understand was why. Why? Well, Common Core is just like that, but to a whole new level. Trust me when I tell you, kids are not being taught how to think. Aren't you glad that I didn't pay attention and conform to those standards? You all tune in to listen to me, right? You like my opinion on things, my take on things, my analysis. Can you imagine if I had adhered to their standards and did what they wanted to do and changed my way of thinking? I don't think my spirit would have allowed it. That's just who I am. My mother even told me I was a born rebel, but that's besides the point. How many people do you think out there that are possible you know, future radio show hosts or whatever and they're you know, or future whatever, maybe astronauts, whatever, and they're they're told you're not gonna be more than a garbage man because you don't think they're put down. Oh, you don't think properly. When in reality, they're thinking properly. They're actually thinking for themselves. But because they don't fit to a prescribed factory setting. See, schools, I said this before, schools are like a factory. The teachers are more quality control personnel than anything else. Your child is the product. The testing is the conveyor belt. The quality control method. The teachers sit there and they apply the tests and then the tests are graded and the tests are like quality control standards to see if your little product is being molded the right way. If your child's brain is conforming to what they want. If little Johnny or little Susie is thinking the way they're being programmed to think. Or, if they're thinking for themselves, and that the control is not working, well, then the child's a problem child. Mrs. Johnson, your little Johnny has ADHD. He needs Ritalin or some other drug. 
Now, I don't know how they really determine how Ritalin will affect someone, because I know that people that don't have quote-unquote ADHD, although the, the guy who supposedly came up with the disease says it's fake. So people that don't have it, if they take Ritalin, Ritalin's like speed. But people that supposedly do have it, Ritalin's a downer. Now, I supposedly had ADHD, and they would give me Ritalin when I was a kid, and I could tell you it was like taking a zombie pill. I couldn't concentrate. I would turn into a walking zombie. And I told my mother, I said, Mom, I don't like this crap. I don't like the way it makes me feel. And I said this on there before. At the time, because my parents were going through a divorce, and it wasn't because of my father. This was the court. This wasn't even my mother or my father trying to do custody or play games. This was the court. Because the doctor had prescribed it for me, and the school was involved. They told my mother that if they prescribed it to me and she didn't, you know, you know, I didn't take it. If I if I didn't go to the doctor and get the prescription, and it was hard for them, it was much harder back in the day to track their prescriptions and if you were actually filling them out, as opposed to it is now. Everything's scanned and digitized now. Long story short, I had to pretend that I took it until I was 14. I stopped taking it when I was 11 years old, but I had to pretend I took it until I was 14 or they would have taken me away from my mother. And my father. They wouldn't have let me. It's not like they would have taken me from my mother and been like, we're going to put him with your father. Oh, no. They wouldn't have allowed me to be with either of my parents. My mom knew this. They, they, she had been threatened with this. She had found this out. So she said to me when I was a kid, not that they had, by the way, when they threatened her, it wasn't that, that they had an inclination. It's just like this overwhelming uh, you know, overall a threat that they first put out there so that you behave right off the bat. It's like almost one of their quote-unquote rules, right? So she just told me when I didn't want to take it anymore, I had to pretend to be on it. She said, you have to learn to focus your mind. So I did. I had to learn to focus. What it is, I do not know. I don't know if there really is hyperactivity, attention deficit disorder. Honestly, from my own experience, I just think that some people think f faster than others. People's computers are faster. Well, our brains are our computers, and some people think faster than others. And those other people that get labeled hyperactive. Because if your brain is in high gear, it's going to be sending signals to other parts of your body and glands and stuff, which are going to produce chemicals, which will put your body into high gear. The brain really does control the body. It's the most powerful computer on the planet. So... I don't think that it's hyperactive attention deficit disorder. I don't think it's a disorder at all. I think quite a, to the contrary, I think it's just a sign of a higher level of thinking or a higher intelligence. And it's not my bashing people saying, oh, you're stupid if you're not hyperactive or making fun of you or anything like that. I'm just saying I think more so, especially from my own experience, um, and I, I, won't <clears throat> I won't say it on air, but I know I have a decently high IQ. Well, I have a high IQ. And um, I know that I'm not stupid, yet on this medication, I was a zombie. And if I had, my mother had listened to you know, the, some of these teachers and some of these school officials, they would have, uh, you would have thought I was retarded. I've, I've said the story where they put me in um, testing for two weeks. When I was a kid, we didn't have air conditioning in schools. We didn't have any of that. We had heat. We had one thing, heat, and it was always even hot in the, the wintertime. You were sweating. So springtime, come springtime, it would get hot as hell in these classrooms. Most people my age or older know what I'm talking about. Nowadays, they, everything's air conditioned. But uh, most of these windows are even hermetically sealed. You can't open them. But um, I had the opportunity to go sit in the air conditioned guidance office for two weeks, not do any school work, get full credit, and read books and magazines. What would you have done? So I did. They thought I was dumb and mentally retarded. At the end of two weeks, they realized I wasn't. When they got their test results back, they got really mad at me. Uh, they realized they had been played. Uh, you know, if it had been up to them, uh, they would have pigeonholed me and put me into a, you know, a special needs class. And here I was, very intelligent. And they once they realized that, they got really mad at me. They are really, really mad at me. Now, again, I thought my experiences with these schools and with some of these teachers was a lot of it, you know, for whatever reason, 
circulated to me, right? Growing up, I, there wasn't many kids that dealt with this. There were a few, but not as many as there are now. Now you see it on a much bigger scale, and I understand what they were doing when I was a kid. Right? And I'm using myself as an example so you can all understand. Again, you all tune into my radio show and listen to me pontificate on something, you know, whatever, whatever subject it may be, analyze something, have a guest on, interview, whatever. You all appreciate my intellect. Right? That's why you tune in. But the powers that shouldn't be, when I was a kid, they didn't like that intellect. That very intellect was what was targeted and made me a quote-unquote problem child. Made me a bad individual. You see what they do to these kids? And they and you know that also has a mental effect on these kids because but if you tell a kid when they're young it doesn't matter if the kid's strong willed or not if you tell a kid when they're young that they're useless and that they're not going to make anything of themselves even if the kid is strong willed and doesn't believe it wholeheartedly that still does affect them and they know this that's why they they try to do that because that's way of them trying to get this 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 person this product to fit or we we maybe we can still mold it it's still malleable. We might be able to get this, this square peg into a round hole. We just got to round off those corners. Get rid of those sharp edges, that intellect. That's what they're doing to these kids. I'm glad parents are seeing it. Charlotte's been talking about this for a very long time. And many of us have been blowing the whistle on this and screaming bloody murder for years. You know, At least since I found out about it, I've been doing my part. But there's many others that have been doing their part for many, many years before. That's one of the reasons that Charlotte has that disc set out too, because uh, it shows a lot of these people that were have been talking about this, you know, for a very long time. So everybody out there that's been saying that Common Core is bad, it's dumbing kids down, and you get called the conspiracy theorist, you get made fun of. It is. It's dumbing kids down. What did Rockefeller say? I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. Well, that's what they're doing. They're, creation, they're creating a nation of workers. They want you and your children, especially your kids, because you're, you know, the older generations are a little bit harder to mold, so they control you with media and propaganda. But the younger generations, they don't even want to have to deal with that crap. It will be much easier to control them. They, they could, they, half the energy and half the money and time that they spend now, if they can mold the younger generations to think completely differently. It's so like I said to Johnny last night, they, they're not allowing you to ha- like look at a problem and think about the problem and come up with a solution to the problem. They're stopping you before you can even think about the problem. They're stopping the thought process where instead of you having looking at it from multiple different angles and trying to figure it out, you're only allowed to think one way and one way only. And if whatever you're looking at doesn't fit into that, then it must be bad. They're programming the future generations. That's what that is. Not only dumbing down, ladies and gentlemen, they're also programming them. Pull your kids out of this crap, homeschool, and teach them free thought. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, man, last half hour. Time just flies. Anyway... Three more things I want to get into. First, the Arctic ice is has proved the global warming alarmists wrong yet again. And by the way, it doesn't mean I don't think that the uh, the the weather isn't changing on the planet, and there isn't some you know some crap going on. Of course, I'm a little bit more of the uh, mind that that's because they are playing with the atmosphere and all of the geoengineering they're doing and weather manipulation that they're doing, and they're using this as a huge science experiment. So um, I don't think it's cow farts and exhaust. I don't think polluting is a great thing, by the way. It doesn't mean I think companies should be allowed to pollute rivers and oceans and lakes and things like that. That's not what I'm saying by any means. But at the same time, I also, like I said, I don't think cow farts are eating a hole in the ozone layer. So, anyway, Arctic ice has stopped this expedition. There was, uh, it's a Russian ship, but it wasn't a Russian expedition. I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was heading out from Australia. 
a bunch of different scientists on it. Uh, and they were heading uh, to Antarctica, and uh, they were retracing the steps for uh, this other uh, Australian expedition from like 100 years ago. And their goal was to go out there and show that global warming is totally destroying things and record the differences and prove that, oh my God, look. And instead they got out there and the Arctic ice is expanding and there's a ton of it and it's sea ice. And the ship is now stuck in the sea ice and it can't go anywhere. The Chinese tried getting to it. They can't get to it with their icebreaker. Their icebreaker, a top-of-the-line icebreaker, got stuck. That's how thick the ice is. This is the same ice that is supposedly melting and drowning polar bears because polar bears don't swim, remember. And, you know, man bear pig is the one melting all the ice because he's breathing fire from his mouth and melting everything if you, if you listen to what Al Gore says, right? So you see the hypocrisy, you see the reality of the situation is there's actually so much Arctic ice that the ship is stuck and that the icebreaker sent to go rescue it can't even get to it. So now they're debating, they're, they're, they're deliberating and I think they're going to do helicopter uh, rescues. They're going to send helicopters out there, but you still have your own problems. The weather that's created just because of the cold air uh, and the conditions uh, you know, uh, that the ice brings with it alone creates different weather conditions and problems. So they're still stuck out there. But hey, global warming is destroying everything. Again, I do believe in weather change and cli- the, the, the overall climate is changing and being modified. But again, that's by a bunch of psychotic a-holes with delusions of grandeur who, uh, again, just like the people that lit off the atomic bomb in New Mexico, more than half of them were convinced that they were going to either crack the crust of the earth or ignite all the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere on fire and kill all life on the planet and basically burn the entire Earth out. And they did it anyway. They did it anyway. You're dealing with real-world, literal, real-world mad scientist people. You know, Dr. Frankenstein, but it's not the innocent Mel Brooks version. This guy's actually the real bad guy. Anyway, so Antarctica... Antarctic ice proving the global warming, uh, you know, hysteria crowd wrong. Oh my God! All the ice caps—they're almost melted. But wait, wait a minute, the polar ice caps that seem to be wow. The ice is expanding. And if you, I think it was in the the late sixties or early seventies, there was a report out that said that the expanding ice was going to affect the climate negatively, and. Uh, we were going to have global climate change due to expanding ice and that we it had to be headed off at the pass. And then all of a sudden it reversed course and it was global warming. And oh my God, And oh, now all the ice caps are melting, but here's proof that they're not. But I'm sure they'll come up with some way to spin this and try to... How come I don't see Al Gore talking about this and, and coming out? And well, you know, the ice is caused because um, this scientific effect, because he doesn't know. Because he's a liar. That's why. Disgusting. Ugh. Anyway, just go keep up with that little that little story. I thought it was funny when I saw that. I was like, ha, ha, ha. Uh, proven wrong again by nature, liars. Just, it's pathetic. I mean, they can, and of course, like I said, they'll come up with 16 different excuses as to why, but whatever. Anyway, moving on. The, do, the two other things I wanted to talk about uh, was the latest revelation with the NSA spying. And then I'm going to get into these terror attacks in Russia and my thoughts on this. So first, the NSA spying. So, there's a unit inside the NSA. And now if I had said this six months ago, people would have said, You're a conspiracy theorist, Popeye. This is all made up. There's no such unit. They would never waste their time. Yet there is such a unit in the NSA uh, that intercepts laptops and computers and stuff that's purchased on other items, purchased electronics, purchased online, and uh, they intercept them you know, en route to their destination. And if they're if they're either looking at not even so much an individual, uh, an area is what the report says. So if you happen to live in a certain area and they think that there's a reason that the NSA feels there's a reason they have to target that certain area, they Anything getting shipped to that area gets routed to this special group, and they'll open up like, uh, say you order a laptop. Laptop comes in, you look at it, it looks like it's factory sealed. But you live in one of these areas, well, 
they happened to the laptop got routed to this group. They opened it up, inserted this equipment inside the laptop, and then factory sealed it up. So it looks like it was sealed at the factory, which means they have bags and stickers and stuff that on, they would only have at the, the, the factory where they manufactured it. And this is this little group of NSA computer hackers, or whatever you want to call them, this NSA crew. Check it out. It's called the TAO. Their job is to get the ungettable. A unit of mostly young hackers are helping the NSA break into computers around the world to access some of the toughest targets. German news magazine Der Spiegel published a report over the weekend revealing the Tailored Access Operations, or the TAO, the National Security Agency's top hacking unit. Spiegel did not disclose how they obtained the NSA documents, but has a history of publishing reports using Edward Snowden leaked material. The NSA's TAO hacking unit is considered to be the intelligent agency's top secret weapon. It began in 1997 when the internet was in its infancy. Now it's one of the fastest growing units of the NSA. This is one of the TAO's central offices in San Antonio, Texas. The unit moved into this former Sony chip factory in 2005 and is expected to have 270 specialists by 2015. Its operations include counterterrorism, cyber attacks, and espionage. They have gained access into 258 targets in 89 countries in the past 10 years. As outlined in the U.S. Intelligence Services budget, by the end of 2013, there will be about 85,000 computers around the world infiltrated by the NSA. Most of these would be through the TAO. It's best described as a team of digital plumbers that unclog black, blocked access to targets. And we now know more about its long list of tools to, keep, to get through these pipes. Some of their tools are passive, such as their X key score spying software. The TAO uses this to fish through internet traffic and find error reports users send to Microsoft when their Windows operating system crashes. The NSA then uses the information to learn about security holes in their target's computer. And remember when we found out in October that the NSA hacked into the president of Mexico's email account. That was the TAO's Operation White Tamale. By accessing the Mexican official's email addresses, it was then able to exploit Mexico's entire security network. One of their most sophisticated set of tools is known internally as quantum theory, which lists Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube all as its targets. Using the same type of technology, the NSA also gained important economic data from high-ranking members of OPEC, which is the powerful oil cartel that's headquartered in Vienna. Along with targeting individuals, the TAO can, entire, can target entire networks, such as CMEWE4, is an optical fiber that's underwater communications cable that runs from France all the way to Singapore. The TAO also intercepts shipping packages, such as laptop computers and USB drives, takes them to a secret location called a load station, and loads spyware on them before delivering them to the target. When asked about these programs, the NSA stated that the tailored access operations is a unique national asset that's on the front lines of enabling NSA to defend the nation and its allies. Regarding other news at the NSA, last Friday, a federal New York judge ruled that the NSA's phone data collection program is legal. This was just days after a judge in Washington state announced it's unconstitutional. The case is expected to be heard by the Supreme Court. Also this weekend, former NSA and CIA chief Michael Hayden had harsh words for the former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, who sparked the debate eight months ago. Well, in the past two weeks, in open letters to the German and the Brazilian government. He has offered to reveal more American secrets to those governments in return for something, and in return was for asylum. I, I think there's a, an English word that describes selling American secrets to another government, and I do think it's treason. In Washington, D.C.? Treason? Really? Really, General Hayden? Really? These comments from the same individual that lied on national television on CNN on Jake Tapper's show, I played the audio here before, and said, No, Jake, I don't think there's any way that the NSA is recording and storing all of these audio conversations. We don't have the technological capabilities to do that, and we're not doing that. Really? Really? You're intercepting packages and literally putting stuff on laptops, putting spyware 
perhaps even maybe inserting a chip here or there. Right from Gizmodo. The NSA revelations keep on coming. And if you're feeling desensitized to the whole thing, it's time to refocus and get your game face on for 2014. Because shit continues to get real. Der Spiegel published two pieces this morning about the NSA's, and this is from the other day, the NSA's Tailored Access Operations, TAO Division, a.k.a. Premier Hacking Ninja Squad. According to Snowden documents, TAO has a catalog of all the commercial equipment that carries NSA backdoors. And it's a who's who of, of a list. Storage products from Western Digital, Seagate, Maxtor and Samsung have backdoors in their firmware. Firewalls from Juniper Networks have been compromised, plus networking equipment from Cisco and Huawei, and even unspecified products from Dell. Ta Tao actually intercepts online orders of these and other electronics to bug them. So if you order a Seagate hard drive or a Western Digital hard drive or something online, and like I said, you're in the area or for whatever reason, and I, I mean, who, one has to wonder how do they pick whose hard drive they're going to bug and who's not, or if they just do them all, and if that's so, I mean, how do they keep up with that? I mean, they would have to have, you know, 50 or 60, I, this crack team can't be four or five guys, it would have to be like, you know, 100 of them, or 200 of them in a warehouse processing that many orders and putting that many things on there, because of the amount of digital orders that go on in this country. Uh, so one has to wonder how they they decide who's to put on what. But there you have it. The NSA is actually intercepting packages. And I like how UPS, FedEx, and the post office, uh, amongst others, DHL, nobody is commenting on this one. Has anybody called FedEx for a comment or UPS and asked them, hey, how many of these packages do you guys, when you pick up from, you know, say you order something from Best Buy and you pick it up from the Best Buy warehouse, uh, you know, obviously it gets delivered to this place. So how does that work? Is it the NSA that's running around picking this stuff up and driving it back? I don't think they would be that efficient at it. It would be more efficient to have, especially if they had government employees leaving and coming back. To, you know, the employee would find a reason to screw off and everything. I think they'd rather have the package carrier handle that. Be more efficient. You don't have to worry about the employee leaving the building and losing focus and everything else, right? So you'd have to have the package carriers deliver it to the building and then pick it back up and bring it to the destination. How long does it take? How long is the turnover rate for one of these things? An hour or two hours? Because the package might, you know, even what happens if this person orders express delivery and it's next day air? How do you manage that one? And do you tell them, oh, there was a problem with shipping, I'm sorry. It took an extra day. But I paid for next day. It was supposed to be here yesterday. Oh, well, we're sorry, but there's nothing we can do. So now you're screwing the guy on the money and you're, you're, you're spying on his laptop or storage device? Samsung phones? You got any of the Galaxy phones? Note, Note 2, Note 3, Note 57 by the time they're done making them? Got any of the other Samsung line of phones? Yep. Backdoor spying. I have an Apple iPhone, Popeye. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you're not exempt. You're included in the list. Anyone else think they're exempt? They're actually building backdoors. They're admitting that there's backdoors already built in. Stuff, places for them to go put this equipment or download something onto the, uh, the computer really quick, or the hard drive, whatever the case may be, memory stick, key tracking software, whatever, something very tiny. You ever notice when you, when you buy memory, you know, you buy a memory, uh, uh, like a, uh, a hard drive, there's always a little bit of space eaten up by the program and stuff that's on there, right? And the programming that, that the thing comes with, maybe some backlog, you know, get, get this drive now, download your pictures instantly from Facebook. I, you, we've all seen it, if you've shopped for a uh, external drive before, you know, one click, download all your pictures from Facebook or your favorite site or whatever, right? Save your stuff. Well, that, that means there's software on that drive. So what else is hidden inside that software. So, there you go. The NSA is actually intercepting packages 
literally intercepting packages. And again, these stories are all on Federal Jack under uh, establishing the police state, but they're all, most of them are listed under the featured stories section up on the front there. Uh, and if you hear this in the archives later on, uh, to just look under the establishing the police state, that, that, or just type in NSA spying, that'll bring up any of the articles related to it. So, final thing I want to uh, give you my analysis of here, because we only have, uh, what about, you know, we probably got about, yeah, about nine and a half minutes. Final thing I want to pontificate on, and I wrote an article actually about this. I have it on Federal Jack. It's titled um, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Terrorists, and the 2014 Olympic Games. Now, if anybody's been paying attention, uh, to nutshell this, because I want to play a piece of audio that goes along with this, uh, it was James Corbett on uh, RT the other day where he's talking about this. Uh, but uh, and I want to try to fit it in. So, to basically, you know, give you my quick analysis of it, I posted this on uh, Facebook as just a, a status update, and then I decided to make an article uh, about it because it was, you know, it's that blatant. So I'll just read you what I wrote. A few months ago, during the last insane push for an invasion into Syria, Saudi Arabia threatened Russia with terrorist attacks if they didn't stop supporting Syria and blocking any attempt of an invasion. We all know that Russia didn't back down, and so far, no military invasion of Syria, yet. Flash forward to this week, suddenly Russia has had two terror attacks in as many days, leading up to the 2014 Olympics. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this one out. Follow the money, and bet it leads to the Saudis, and by proxy, the CIA. Now, I'm, I'm sure the, the Gladio network, you know, uh, the, the little NATO stay-behind terrorist uh, operation, uh, could be, have their fingers involved in it, but the min- basic manipulators would be the CIA, and then, you know, by proxy, whoever they had to manipulate into helping them out. Again, Saudi Arabia, a couple of months back, if you go look at the article, there's links like where it says uh, Saudi Arabia threatened Russia, it's a hyperlink, and you click on it, and it'll show the article from a few months back where they threatened Russia because Russia's stance on not pushing for the invasion of Syria and the, the start of World War III, basically. And that, you know that's why everybody was like, wow, Putin stopped World War III and Obama didn't. Remember all that? Well, during that whole melee, Saudi Arabia threatened Russia. And of course, our media really didn't talk about it much, of course. But the foreign media did. And a few months later, these very same terrorists, the Chechnyan terrorists that Saudi Arabia said that, you know, hey, we control them, we'll, we'll, we, we can either make them not do it or make them do it, you know, let them have at it, and even, you know, back them any way they need. And you have two terror attacks leading up to the Olympics in the area of the Olympics. The very same thing that the Saudis threatened they would do. It doesn't, again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this one out. So, I'm going to play this clip from RT. Now, RT tries to steer it like, oh, is it an attack on the Olympic Games? Blah, 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 blah. And they admit that some people you know, think it's directed directly at Russia because of the Olympics. But they, uh, James Corbett touches on the, the, the Saudi threat more than RT does. But I, I, I'll play this clip from RT because this, they're the only people, again, it was Russia that was attacked. And uh, Corbett does put out a lot of good information. And it could be... Uh, a few different things but to me in my eyes this just reeks of you know uh, a retaliation strike against Putin for his stance and Russia's stance on the invasion of Syria so here check this out many are speculating that the terror attacks in Volgograd were specifically plans to target Russia ahead of the upcoming winter games in Sochi. It's not the first terror attack that's been linked to Olympic events. Back in July 2005, a series of suicide attacks hit London a day after it won the chance to host the Olympics. And for more on this, we can now talk to James Corbett, editor of the independent uh, news website, uh, Corbett Report. Uh, James, welcome to RT. Very nice to talk to you right now. Do you think that all big international events like the upcoming Olympics in Sochi, uh, for instance, are a major attraction to terrorists? Well, of course, they do present an attractive target because the eyes of the world really are on whatever city happens to be hosting a big event like that. So we have to look at the these uh, current bombings in Volgograd as 
a potential um, spread, spreading and widening of the the troubles that have been taking place in the North Caucasus region. But I think what these back-to-back blasts really indicate is a uh, widening of that threat and expansion of it into a city that's beyond the, the North Caucasus region itself, where these types of terror attacks are more common at any rate, and into the that transport hub, which uh, really connects Russia to the rest of, uh, connects the North Caucasus to the rest of Russia. So I think this has to be seen as an Im- implication, at least, of a uh, widening terror campaign. Uh, the July 2005 London bombings also targeted the public transport system, like the attacks in Volgograd we're witnessing right now. Uh, what do those similarities tell us? Well, not a lot in and of themselves, because, of course, there are a lot of different um, uh, events that we could look at, including, of course, the 1980 uh, Bologna train bo- uh, station bombing uh, back in Italy, which, of course, was linked to the Operation Gladio that was being run by NATO forces. And, in fact, it's a rather sad irony of this entire event that uh, the current uh, Secretary General of NATO, Anders Fogh Ra- Rasmussen, has just taken to Twitter to give his condolences to the people of Russia on this tragedy, um, being a particular uh, a sad irony because, of course, many of the Chechen rebels have been harbored uh, through EU political asylum in European uh, nations and in NATO uh, countries themselves, including uh, France and Poland and uh, Britain, where, of course, one of the former Chechen rebel leaders, Ahmed Zakiev, has been residing for a number of years now. So it is, uh, it's kind of ironic that that's, uh, that's happening. But I think this really has to get us to question what the, the real threat is and where it's really coming from. And in that regard, um, we can not only only look at the current Chechen rebel leader Doku Umarov's um, promise to to cause uh, disturbance ahead of the 2014 Sochi Olympics and of course at the Olympics themselves but also a direct threat that was issued according to a leaked uh, report of a meeting between the current Saudi intelligence chief uh, Bandar bin Sultan better known as Bandar Bush and Vladimir Putin back last July where apparently uh, according to these leaked reports uh, Bandar bin Sultan directly threatened uh, Putin and Russia with expanded terror attacks if the uh, attack on Syria did not go ahead. And as we know, of course, Syrian military intervention was put off the table earlier this year, meaning that potentially this is sourcing back to the Saudis. Mm. Uh, In London, the attacks were carried out by Islamic radicals. Uh, In your opinion, is it the same case here in Volgograd? Well, of course, the Islamic radicals are the ones that t- tend to carry out these attacks, but uh, the ones that are directing, funding, fostering, and training them tend to be um, elsewhere, located elsewhere. And, of course, we have, for example, the uh, the testimony of former FBI whistleblower Sibel Edmonds talking about Operation Gladio B. Uh, earlier this year, she was talking about how this uh, this operation was a NATO fund is an ongoing NATO-funded operation in cooperation with the Pentagon to stir up Islamic radical terrorism, specifically in that North Caucasus region and uh, and the surrounding area as a type of threat directed at Russia and, of course, at China as well, sitting right there on Russia's doorstep. So I think we have to see this in that context and as a potential larger geopolitical threat to Russia. So I do expect uh, that uh, anyone will claim responsibility for that tax anytime soon. Uh, I, I don't know if that will be coming, um, but at, at any rate, as we know, of course, these bombings are linked. We can tell that from the forensic evidence of the bombs themselves and the, the types of agents that were added to them. So there's no doubt that this is a part of a, uh, a terror message that's being delivered to Russia right now. And, of course, the fact that the Sochi Olympics are right around the corner is obviously a key component of that message. There you have it. So I'm not the only one. And, again, you could look at it, you know, 18 different ways. Why would the Chechen rebels attack right after, you know, even if it was last year, last July, six months, seven months ago, why would they, uh, why would they, why would they attack according to the timetable of the Saudi threat? You have to look at that. You have to ask that question. You have to ask yourself that. Hmm. Anyway. You know my thoughts on it. Research for yourself. Come to your own conclusions, but believe the truth is right in front of your face. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. Don't forget. This is Sparta! You are powerful. You can make a difference, and you can make a positive change. Don't you forget that. Aside from all this craziness, don't you forget that. 
You can make a positive change. You really can. I love you all. I'll catch you all again live tomorrow night. I'm out of here.